my early history in South Africa is quite important because I was involved with people like Mandela from a very young age. I met him when I was 10 years old. Mm. And I met most of the leaders of the, of the movement at a very young age because I was involved since the age of 10. Um, and I was first questioned and arrested at the age of 13. So I've been involved for a long time. Mm. Now, when I came to uh, Britain, I was told to, to place, play cool because the movement was thinking of sending me back. Yeah. But I was, I was involved in training young people mm. like I was doing in South Africa. And these people were going back home. But some of them were arrested after about 69, 1970. I got here and I was doing the anti apartheid work and I was surprised that it only existed in Cardiff. And there were small groups of people in Swansea, Newport mm. and other places, but no well, Welsh organization. So it was painstaking work. Uh, there was a lot of racism, yeah. uh, even in Wales at the time, uh, all, over the, all over the UK. There were signs in the windows saying things like, uh, no blacks, no wogs, no Irishmen. You know, uh, room to let. Mm -hmm. But if a black man went to apply for it, or an Asian guy, it's suddenly gone. Yes. And what we did in Birmingham was we had a trial and error thing where we sent some white friends mm -hmm. to apply for the room and they would be given it. Then an Asian guy would go and they say, no, it's taken. So we exposed people like that both in Birmingham and Cardiff. But the anti apartheid movement initially comprised only about a dozen odd people in Cardiff. Mm. And we went about building it as an organization in Cardiff. I then got hold of the anti apartheid movement nationally because I was on the executive of the national movement uh, very early uh, when I, after I started work, work, to work openly. And they gave me a list of members in, the, in in Wales, who are affiliated nationally. And around that caucus, we, we developed groups in Swansea, first of all, Newport, some of the valley areas. And eventually, branches grew up in Merthyr, uh, Swansea, Wrexham, mm. Denby. Then literally, about, by the time we got to about 1989, we had 22 branches in 22 cities and mm. towns. Every college and university was more or less affiliated. But from then onwards, the movement began to grow, not only on uh, the issue of demonstrating against rugby, but the boycott movement generally. Mm. Uh, boycott of products like South African fruit, vegetables, any, any item mm. that, that was coming in from South Africa, including vehicles. And you'd be amazed at the kind, of, some of the stuff that was coming in here. Mm -hmm. from tools like spades and uh, knives and forks. Mm -hmm. Although there was a lot of support for anti-apartheid, mm -hmm. apartheid was also supported by various people, mm -hmm. mainly for financial reasons. But finance is not the only reason why people supported apartheid. Some people actually agreed with it. Yes. There was also a lot of arguments about kith and kin that you know we are, we are were protesting against white superiority mm. but a lot of people here had relatives in South Africa. Mm. You see in the 1860s after the discovery of gold and diamonds a lot of people from England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Germany, all over the world went to South Africa to work mm. because there was big money there to be made. They went as workers but very quickly became bosses. Mm.